Hello, Park Township, and hello, everyone online. Uh, I'm so happy to see you again, especially after yesterday. That was the first day that I announced my campaign, and I started um, to dive deep into a little bit about my opinions on certain policies and about certain reforms that are currently happening in Park Township today. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you for listening, thank you for being here, thank you for watching, and I can't wait to embark on this journey with, I mean, really all of you. So I, I did want to talk a little bit about yesterday's speech and uh, about some of the responses I got from you. Um, when we were talking about the schools and we were talking about the school shootings and how that is such a big problem um, today. I had one response and one comment that was basically, um, well, what are you gonna do about it? What are your solutions? And it's a fair point, it's a fair question. And it's a question that needs to be asked. And my answer to that is simply, we need to do everything we can to stop it without infringing on our rights as Americans um, and that our founding fathers put into place. For example, I am 100% opposed to any ideology threatening your Second Amendment right to bear arms. However, technology today is improving, okay? We are living in a world that is so advanced, it's, it's hard to comprehend how smart some people are because <laughs> I don't. I couldn't be that smart. But there's there's technologies like OmniAlert and like Evolve Express, and what these people do, it's it's actually super cool. On every entrance to the doors, like and when you walk in uh, to a school, it'd be discreetly hidden above the door entrance, every single door, and it's specifically designed to only. Um, detect firearms, to only detect guns, rifles, pistols, whatever, only detect firearms, which immediately sends a response and it immediately sends a hazard and an alert saying that a threat has entered the premise. Um, there's definitely a lot more technologies than OmniAlert and Evolve Express that I'm not naming. However, it, it's important for all of us to really just understand that there is things that we can do to better the problem and solve the problem to the best that we can without infringing on any of our rights, God-given rights as Americans. I did also want to talk about uh, my stance on, and my opinion on the need for lifeguards at our beaches. Uh, I got one response um, from a from a fellow Park Township resident that watched. And she told me, she said, Kevin, um, the reason that we don't have lifeguards is because we're scared of lawsuits. <sighs> we're scared that we're gonna get sued. Um, and I had to take that one. I had to slow myself down and, and um, really understand where they're coming from because it's a valid point. I get it. Um, but I'm a big believer that no matter what the problem is, if there's a will, there's a way. No life should ever be sacrificed for the scaredness and the, the thought of potentially having to go through a lawsuit. We need lifeguards and we need them now. I firmly believe that. I have been a swimmer my entire life. Um, I have jumped off the pier a million times. And we need lifeguards. I, I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I'm not saying that I'm smart by saying that. That's just a fact. The only opposition is that we could go through a lawsuit. That is not more important than life or death. That is not. Money is material. Money is replaceable. A life is not. We need to protect our citizens and our residents' lives and prioritize their safety and get lifeguards at our beaches. And even if you're still worried, if we have lifeguards and you're still worried about a lawsuit, there's still things that we can do, you know, to, to make sure that we don't have to go through something like that because it wouldn't be fun. 
Um, we could have people sign a waiver before they enter the park. We could put signs up all over the place. Swim at your own risk. 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 Your own risk. You wouldn't be able to enter the park without knowing that you are swimming at your own risk. Um, and it is not up to the lifeguard to save you. They're going to do everything they can, but it is not up to the lifeguard to save you. So we can't let a lawsuit, a potential lawsuit, get in the way of safety of our residents and our tourists because that is what's important. Our safety is what's important. And I know yesterday uh, you, you probably heard me speak and you were like, who the heck is this guy? I've never seen this guy in my life. And, you know, it's a fair point. So I, I wanted to take some time today and, and, and go over a little bit about myself and, and for, me to, for me to have the chance to tell you why I am fit for this job. You know, as a local business owner, I, I, I own Lakeside Property Masters. I founded Lakeside Property Masters, a park township based um, cleaning service company, cleaning service, as well as applications, uh, staining and sealing. And we do it all. Uh, we do good work, too. So anyone watching this, you know, uh, feel free to give us a call. We'd be more than happy to help out. But I am incredibly proud, you know, with the work that we have done and how much we have grown in the past year um, and in the past few months, we have grown exponentially. Um, and I have uh, developed through myself and through my mentors. Uh, I had one mentor that is really close to me. His name's Rob. He's so smart and he has told me so many great, great pieces of advice that it stick with me to this day. Wear your brand at all times, invest in yourself. Uh, you know, there's always look at the bigger picture. This man is a genius. This man is an entrepreneur. And this man is someone I looked up to. So thank you, Rob. But Lakeside Property Masters, we have done so well. We, we really have done incredible. And it has been based on a, a four-step principle for me. One, we invested. I invested almost everything I had into this business and into this growth and success because I knew that it was going to be successful. Um, number two is share. You share the wealth. Everyone that was along with the journey and, and part of the journey and who did so much, not only uh, for me and made me proud of them, but for us, for Lakeside Property Masters and, and for Park Township. Because, you know, as a 20-year-old, I am young. I know I'm young, but our youth, you know, because I know there's some of you that are 20 or, or even below that still can vote. We can't let our youth and we can't let the youth of Park Township be judged and their intelligence be judged based on their age. That is ridiculous. Okay. If someone doubts you because of your age and because of you're young and, and they say you're too young to do something. Go out and prove them wrong. I am fit for this job and I am fit for this position regardless of my age. I have the intellectual experience and I have the business acumen. Okay, we have grown so much. I, we, we have built so much. Um, and I, I could not have done any of this without every single one of the Lakeside Property Masters family. So I thank you guys because... You guys are the ones that are working hard and you guys are the ones that make me want to do big things and make me um, confident in y'all. You guys are incredible. I could list all of you, but I don't know if you want to remain confident. I, I don't know. Um, so thank you guys. Just know. Thank you. I, I also, um, I did want to mention a little bit about my family. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys know my siblings. They are incredible. Um, but... My parents and my siblings have done so much for me and instilled me with not only the drive, not only the confidence, not only the charisma, not only the passion, not only the will to succeed and not only the daringness to take risks, but they have inspired me to do big things, to do great things and to not be satisfied um, when other people say you're doing great, when other people think you're doing great. 
you're not satisfied until you have made a difference. I will not be satisfied until I know that I made Park Township back and I took Park Township from where it was and I put it back on the right path to succeed and to grow because right now, I'm gonna get into this later, um, as, a, as much of a positive guy as I am, I think we are headed down a path that uh, will be detrimental. You know, and it might not be in one year, it might not be in two years, it might not be in five. But for the long-term growth of Park Township, we need someone who is here to stay, who represents the youth, who represents a diverse yet enthusiastic group of people that haven't been represented in government. That is why I am the perfect candidate to write in. I miss the primaries. You know, I, I um, probably signed up for this a little bit too late. And also that there has never been, there has never been one write in candidate from Park Township to win and to be elected a spot on the board of trustees. However, I have the utmost confidence and I am 100% sure that with all of you and all of your help, um, we will do this together because this is a tough task, a daunting task to many, but oh boy, am I excited. I am not scared of this, okay? It, none of this scares me. This is fun. This is enjoyable and we can do this together. That's the only way we can do this. I can't do this by myself. Um, but back to my family, I get sidetracked, sorry. But back to my family, my dad, uh, he's the definition of charisma, of passion, of enthusiasm, and of optimism. I remember uh, we were at an Iowa football game um, a couple of years back. He's the biggest Iowa football fan. And um, they were four and eight the year before. So four wins, eight losses for those of you who don't know football. Um, but he was so confident. Uh, he was so confident that they were going to win a national championship. And me, you know, his, his young kid, he got me so excited. And he was like, let's go. They're going to win a national championship. Um, you know, he just, he, it's so uplifting and it's so positive and it's so fun to be around. I have learned so much from you, dad. So thank you. And mom, you are the definition of will, of nothing is impossible, of drives. And you have taught me to always follow my passion. Do what I feel is right, not what others think that I should do. I am always going to choose my own path and carve my own path. And I may be labeled as a disruptor by many, but I know by the few who, who know me well and know me personally like you, that I learned that from you, mom. And I'm not a disruptor. I am a man who is trying to inspire a group of people to make a change, to be the change, because this is the only way that we can grow as a community. And this is just a start. Let me make that clear. This is just a start of what we are going to do together. Um, now, I remember there was a story from my mom. We went to Indianapolis uh, for my brother Derek's swim meet. And we got there. Um, actually, I was there too. We got there and Derek checked the swim bag and he was like, oh gosh, uh, I forgot my suit. My, for, for those of you who don't know, swimmers, they have like tech suits, so they're super tight, they're expensive, they are, you know, jammers, but they're, he, he forgot his nice suit. Um, and my mom was like, okay, no problem, I'll just drive back and get it. We got there at 10 p.m. She went back to Holland, she drove back to Holland, she got to Holland at 5 a.m., back to Indianapolis at 10 a.m. She drove 15 hours in a row for my brother to swim his race. And, and Derek swam incredible, um, but we were surrounded by someone who did not uh, say no to a daunting task because it was daunting and never um, put it in her head that something was impossible. If there's a will, there's a way. So thank you, mom, for showing me 
um, that I need to follow my passion and I, I need to do what I think is best for me and that I am never going to doubt myself. So thank you, mom. Um, next, I want to talk about and thank my oldest brother, Kyle. Kyle, you are the best role model that any younger brother could ask for. Um, for those of you who don't know Kyle, um, he is just the best role model. He is consistent. He shows up and he will not let you down. He is a hard worker and he is someone that I look up to. Um, he, a fun fact about Kyle is actually he has never sworn. You know, this man is in his mid-20s and he has never sworn. I have never heard a cuss word come out of his mouth. I remember there was times we would listen to uh, some rap songs. I would play, I would have the ox and I would play his uh, um, his favorite song and I had a few cuss words. And no, he didn't. He didn't. Even when we tried to bait him, even when we paused it right before uh, the F-bomb, he still wouldn't. So thank you, Kyle, for being the best role model you know, a younger brother like me could ask for. Uh, next, I want to thank Jenna. Jenna, you are so empathetic. You are selfless. And you have been someone that I can count on when I'm down and when I feel like I need to talk to someone who's not going to judge, who is going to try to hear me out from my perspective, not immediately jump to conclusions, and most importantly, not judge. So thank you, Jenna, for showing me that, you know, it, it, it's, it's not something where you, uh, nobody has the right to say what you're doing is wrong or say what you're doing is right because they're not you. And you have always tried to listen to me and just hear me out, hear my perspective, um, because that's all you cared about. All you wanted to do was hear me. So thank you, Jenna. Um, Jenna is, is, is so, 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 so empathetic. And I, I could not be appreciative. Um, I could not be more appreciative for all that you've done for me. And last but not least, Derek, my roommate of 15 years growing up. Thank you, Derek, for showing me what true work ethic is, what true um, consistency is, and um, allowing yourself uh, to let what maybe might bring others down and factors that maybe might make others give up, you let that motivate you and you let, you, you let that make you be a better person, make you be a better swimmer, make you be a better doctor. This man is incredible. And for, I mean, yeah, if, I'm going to tell a little story about Derek. When he was a sophomore, he didn't have the best year when he was swimming. You know, there's a lot of factors with... Uh, you know, the virus and with certain regulations on swimming times and this and that. There was, there's a lot of things that, that maybe set him back, but Derek had a down year, his sophomore year. Um, but you know what he did? He, few, he let that and he let his sophomore experience and his sophomore pain of not swimming the best he could motivate him. And he let that fuel the fire of exploding in his junior year of college. Uh, this man is, he won three SEC titles uh, in swimming. And thank you, Derek, for showing me that anything's possible, but also showing me that, you know, you got to have a motivator and something, you got to have an edge if you want to be successful. You got to have the edge. Um, so I always look for any sort of edge I can. And thank you, Derek, for, for teaching me. You, maybe you didn't even teach me. You didn't even realize you were teaching me, but um, you showed me that you need an edge to be successful. Park Township needs an edge. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, writing me in gives us that edge. Um, we want, we want uh, someone with my perspective on our team. But thank you to all of my family. They, they are... The definition, I could never live up to what they're doing because every single one of them um, is dedicating and sacrificing the rest of their life uh, for the better good of our community. Uh, my mom and dad are both radiologists. 
of over 30 years reading x-rays, reading MRIs, reading CTs, um, and telling the surgeons uh, which, which you know, bones are broken, which tendons are snapped, which nerves are uh, shattered. I, I don't know. I'm not a big doctor, but um, they are and they are so smart and they're so willing to help. Um, but that's what doctors do. That's what the people in medicine do. Uh, Kyle and Derek are both in med school at NYU and at Vanderbilt. And Jenna is an occupational therapist. They have all dedicated their life um, for the better good of humanity and the better good of our community. So thank you. Um, thank you to my whole family, because I know you're watching. Thank you to my whole family for showing me uh, to be selfless, you know, to think about the community first and yourself second. So thank you guys. I also want to shout out some of my cousins because I wouldn't be here without them either. Jonathan, Jessica, Eddie, Margie, Sean, Logan, Cameron, and uh, JJ and Connor. Thank you guys for uh, always being so supportive to me um, in times that maybe were tough for all of us, in times that were great for some, rough for a few. It doesn't matter. You always showed me support. You always showed me love. Um, and I will be forever grateful for all of you for that. And I did want to say one last thing uh, about my late cousin, Jonathan. I miss you. I love you. And, um, and I'm going to see you soon. And I can't wait to see you soon. Um, but there's, there is things that we need to take care of here first. And, um, and I know it's going to be a long time, but I can't wait to see you. But we got some things to take care of before I can see you. And one of those things um, has to do with short-term rentals of Park Township. Because as silly as this sounds, and some people may not be interested, this is important to all of us. Okay, this affects Park Township's overall economy. Every single business in Park Township is affected by short-term rentals. And on November 10th, 20, 2022, the Park Township Board voted six to zero to ban short-term rentals. And you may think this and be like, oh, six zero is an easy choice. Uh, but I'm a big believer in knowing the facts and hearing the facts, hearing the why, the stats, not, not someone's opinion, hearing the stats, then forming your own opinion. So that's what I'm going to do, and that's what I'm going to help do um, for all of us right now. 49% of restaurant sales in Park Township came from tourists, okay? And, I mean, that, that's incredible because, you know, Park Township, we're, we're a big community. We have a lot of restaurants, but 49% of our sales came from people not in Park Township. People love coming here. People love staying here. And we, as an economy, rely on tourism. It's just a fact. 39% um, of homeowners in Park Township spend $20,000. That's so much money. 39% um, of homeowners in Park Township spend $20,000 um, annually on services um, on local services like cleaning services, lawn care, maintenance, you name it, um, for the better good of their property. And they are so much more likely uh, to spend this kind of money on these kind of services um, if they are getting a return on their investment, hence short-term rentals. Two out of three businesses in Park Township have said and made their voice clear that short-term rentals benefit their business. Two-thirds, 66.6% .6 of businesses. That's a lot of people. Um, and and one, one harm that's a statistic fact is that short-term rentals, the ban of short-term rentals could cause service-based businesses like cleaning services and like lawn care to lose up to 100% of their contracts because, you know, like we said a couple... Um, a couple stats ago, people, residents, homeowners are way more likely to buy 
certain services and to invest in their property if they're getting a return on their investment. I mean, it just, it makes sense. So I, I, I do need to neglect my bias because I am a service-based business and I represent the CEO of a service-based business. So um, just understand that when I say that, but when we did this and when we banned short-term rentals in 2022, Park Township saw a 0.6% decrease in home value. So really not much, 0.6%, that's nothing. So if the $100,000 home uh, in 2021 and 2022, uh, it would have been 0.6% less than that, uh, which would probably be around $600. So it'd be 99,000. $400 instead of a hundred grand. So it's not that big of a difference. Um, and we need to focus on the real issues because that is not an okay excuse. And, and we need to understand that we don't have to jump immediately to have level 100 immediate ban. There is other alternatives and there's things that we can do to make sure that, that, that we are in a place to succeed. And we are in a place that, that welcomes tourism and also welcomes our economy, supports our economy. You know, we, we could just by having strict regulations and being strict with regulations on short-term rentals um, would not necessarily uh, need a, a ban. You don't need a ban if you have strict regulations. You know, you could require owner occupancy you know, you could require that the, the, the public reporting, you know, you, you let the public know when you are doing short-term rentals. Uh, you know, we could make it seasonal only. That's a super easy thing to do. We could only allow short-term rentals in tulip time. I don't know. But there's things that we can do. We can even just add licensing and registration for short-term rentals through Park Township just to add one extra step um, you know, to, to make it where if you want to do short-term rentals, you have to want to do it. And uh, we can add another step to, you know, I hate to say just make it more hard, but yeah, make it more hard. I don't know, uh, whatever you want to call it, limit the amount of number. We can put caps on short-term rentals. Uh, that's something they do in Asheville, North Carolina. You guys can look that up if you want to know more about that. Um, or just zoning regulations. You can only allow certain uh, short-term rentals in a certain geographic area that makes sense for it. Uh, and that limits the overuse of short-term rentals in, say, other areas that are strictly residential and, and owner-occupied. Um, and as the CEO of a service-based business and a local park township business, um, you know, th th this scares me. It really does scare me. Short-term rentals should not have been banned. Short-term rentals are good and were good for our economy. And the majority of business owners say that they were better off when short-term rentals were not banned in Park Township. So we as a community need to look at it, need to reflect on our decision back two years ago in 2022 need to look at what happened, need to look at what the residents say, need to look at what the business owners say, and come to a conclusion. Um, I bring a perspective, you know, as a 20-year-old, I bring a perspective to the table to short-term rentals because I am a business owner and I have seen, you know, people, you know, in, in the city of Holland, a lot of people, landlords, do short-term rentals. And a lot more of people there uh, who do those rentals are more likely uh, to get maintaining on their property, get continuous maintenance on their property, contracts on their property, um, because that, that's, that's what we all want at the end of the day. So if you have an opinion on short-term rentals, and if you have a strong opinion, or as a Park Township resident, or just as a resident literally who lives anywhere and has an opinion on it, leave a comment down below and join the discussion. Because, you know, for, for the billionth time, I know I didn't say it a billion times, but I can't do this alone. 
and I need your help. And just by you telling me your voice and you telling me your perspective, I gain a new perspective and I gain a new level of intelligence because I am hearing the voice of a large quantity of people that the other candidates maybe don't have. So I am so lucky that I can have a voice and I can have a platform like this to talk to you and uh, you know to work together as a team because it's all about the team. And we're gonna see that today. I'm sure when some of you guys are watching this, Michigan already played Texas or they're about to play. Uh, and that's gonna be a great game. But you're gonna see both Michigan and Texas, both every sport, okay? Every corporation, every business, every church, every single group of people that works together for a common goal and for a common purpose is a team. I want to rely on you and I want to listen to you and let your voice be heard in Park Township government. So without further ado, I, I want good for Park Township. I do. And you can't tell me otherwise because that's the main thing I want. I'm Kevin J. Moss and I approve this message.